$30,000. That's the world's changing, man. I've been watching your YouTube channel for a while and I enjoy it. I actually trust you enough to help me out and I'm completely ignorant in what I'm about to do. I'm a retiring educator and coach who is going to start his own farm and I know what implements I would like to use, but I need to get the best price because I'm a single income teacher. So I'm hoping I can get some guidance for you once I tell you what I want to do. I want to have pastured poultry, hogs, and goats as well as produce. I would like my tractor to be able to have the following attachments as easily mounted as possible because it's just me and my dog, no extra hands. I think I need a quick attach too. Pallet forks are important to me. I would like to have a tiller and a disc attachment if I need that too. Obviously a front end loader, a post hole digger. I'll need something to cut grass when needed on a larger scale, 10 acres or so. I'd like to be able to have a stump remover eventually, depending on the property that he buys. I believe I want something more than 25 horsepower, but I don't need 50 plus. I'm buying the land so as not to have a mortgage, but I'll obviously have to finance my tractor. I was thinking of Coyote, but I need some expert advice. So fair warning, okay? You send me an email, you might wind up in a video. I'll keep it anonymous. You're not gonna know who it is, but uh, nonetheless, the content's there. And uh, I do this kind of thing on from time to time to try to help others, right? Or um, to try to help change your mind on how you think about finding the right tractor for yourself. And so that's the initial email that I got. I asked a few simple questions on where my mind is at on what I actually need to know in order to make a better recommendation for you. Not that this is the everything to make a recommendation, but um, my response back to this customer. Is this all flat ground or lots of hills? That's an important consideration. Uh, he's mentioning horsepower. He wants more than 25 horsepower, less than 50. Why? Like, how does he know how much horsepower that he needs? I don't understand. I still don't understand when people say, you need a 40 horsepower tractor, you need a 25 horsepower, you need a 60 horsepower tractor. Why? Um, someone else recently, I can't think of what exactly it was, they asked if uh, a certain tractor could, could handle hay work, you know, raking and tedding and bailing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, in my head, I didn't say this to the customer, but you can do this with a 1025 or with a Summit tractor, some 25 horsepower tractor. You just have to find the size of attachments that work with this tractor. So if you had a hundred acre hay field, that would, that would take you an eternity. You'd have to just live on your tractor 24 hours a day to get that work done, but technically it can do it. You know, so at, at a certain point, most jobs become about efficiency and not wanting to take all day to get it done. Um, and being able to accomplish that still within your budget um, and in a manageable amount of time. And we did a whole video talking about the time difference in the size of attachment, right? And we used uh, tilling, I think it was an acre, with a four foot tiller, with a five foot, with a six foot, with a seven foot tiller, and how much time you can save. And so if you're doing this on a yearly basis or many times a year, well, that's how much potential time you're saving, fuel, hours on your tractor, yada, 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 so you can get more stuff done. So these are all considerations to take into play. Um, not that horsepower doesn't come into play at a, at a certain point, but there's a lot of other things to think about. But that's why my first question asked him if he's on flat ground or on hills, because if you are on hills or maybe at elevation, you know, in the mountains or something, typically you want more horsepower because going up a hill and pulling a load or a full bucket of dirt is just gonna put more strain on the engine and on the tractor, and so you need a little bit more oomph to do that. On flat ground and, you know, closer to sea level, it's not as big of a consideration, but I thought, who knows, maybe that's where he's going with this whole horsepower thing, so let's try to find out. So his response to, to his ground that he doesn't own yet, he's looking for ground um, in southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, as well as Kentucky and West Virginia. So actually, I mean, I, I know Kentucky and West Virginia, and, and those can definitely be hilly. I mean, I don't know, there's some hills in Alabama, I guess. I'm not sure about Mississippi, but uh, elevation is, is fairly low for m you know, most of that. I guess Kentucky and West Virginia can be a little bit higher. So you may want a little bit more horsepower. So, um, you know, if you have a tractor that you can get in a 25, a 32 and a 38, like the John Deere 3E series, for example, maybe instead of getting the 3025E, you at least get the 3032E, if not the 3038E, just to have that extra oomph uh, if you are gonna deal with hills. If you wind up on flat ground, no big deal, maybe stick with that 3025E. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. Now, next question I said is, do you have a rough budget? All right. And you know, and I, first of all, I want to give this gentleman um, kudos because he is in the planning phase right now. This is, he hasn't jumped the gun and already bought the land and, and you know, bought a tractor and now is wondering if it's all going to work for what he wants to do. He's, he's doing his research ahead of time. And so I compliment him for that. It's the right way to go about it. And you don't know unless you ask these questions. So, um, so good job. And this is gonna be a bit of sticker shock because uh, that's the market that we live in these days. But originally he said he was hoping to find a tractor for under 10 grand, which unless you wanna get you know an old Ford 8N, I mean, there's, you're not gonna get much with a front end loader and, and uh, a modern tractor for under 10 grand. That's just not happening anymore. So now he's hoping for 30 grand, uh, maybe putting a down payment on, financing a, a good chunk of it. Um, you know, Again, this is mind blowing, but several customers recently have sent me their quotes on 1025Rs that have hovered around the $30,000 mark. I think one of them included like a postal digger that was a little bit over um, 30,000, like 32,000. Another one included a set of pallet forks. Anyway, the point being around $30,000 for a John Deere 1025R with a front end loader and a belly mower. $30,000. That's the world's changing, man. And, uh, it's just insane how much things cost. And you know, yes, things are normalizing a bit, uh, but it's not like you're gonna see a John Deere 1025R coming up for sale brand new for 20 grand. That Those days are gone, right? You might see sales or whatever else that get those prices down a little bit from time to time, but guess what? Next year at this time, the prices are gonna be higher. That That's just how it goes. Um, so even $30,000, as much as I hate to say it, is a tough budget. Now, the Summit, uh, right now is, I think it's currently under 20 grand as far as I know, with a front end loader, no belly mower, all right? So I wanna clarify that, but you do get a lot of other stuff too. You get the front remote, the rear remote, liquid ballast in the rear tires, mirrors, R14 tires on there, self-leveling loader, a lot of good things. But even then, say 20 grand, right? You've got 10 grand left to buy these other attachments. He wants a tiller, he wants pallet forks, uh, he wants a mower eventually. I think he said some other things too, and so, you know, the bigger the tractor you get, the more expensive the attachments as well. 30 grand, even that is gonna be pushing it with a pretty good price point tractor like the Summit. Now he did talk about, well, maybe I need to get a tiller and a disc. You know, that's where you make the hard decisions of getting one or the other. Personally, I would go with a tiller unless you have insanely rocky ground that would lean me towards a disc, but a tiller is gonna give you a lot better results uh, compared to a disc. And if I had them sitting side by side, 99 times out of 100, I'm gonna use the tiller over the disc. But basically it's about trying to find those attachments that are the most versatile, the best bang for your buck. And we've done videos on that too to, to tell you guys it's not a dedicated tool. We did a, a video recently on a product called the Ditch Box. Amazing tool, incredible at putting in a ditch, but it's not a very versatile tool, right? And so there are certain tools that you, if you have a huge, a huge gigantic project or an ongoing need and it's a, a job specific tool, go ahead and buy it. But otherwise, get yourself something like a set of pallet forks like he's talking about. They can do so many different jobs. I mean, lifting pallets is like just the tip of the iceberg. You can move logs, brush, patio furniture, pallets of uh, pellets around, move your other attachments around, stack them on, on racking, all sorts of stuff with those. And they're just super handy to have. Now he mentioned he was gonna have a need to mow his yard. And for me, that automatically pops up the question, do you want a belly mower on your tractor or do you plan on doing it with a three-point finish mower? And he replied that he had watched videos and uh, decided he didn't want a belly mower on there and he would use uh, something on the three-point hitch. And for me, that's an important question because getting back to, if we said it was that John Deere 3E series, that doesn't even have a mid PTO. You can't put a belly mower on there. And so I would have ruled that series out for him. Now the Summit tractor is a bit of an anomaly. It does have a mid PTO. They will have a belly mower eventually. They're not really pushing it. And I agree with them because it's, it's in my opinion, too heavy to want to mow with. I don't want to mow my yard with this tractor. You know, I think the subcompacts like the 1025R, the Kubota BX, uh, the Coyote CS series, I think it is, and similar, 
that's really about as big as I would want to mow my yard with. Uh, beyond that, the tractors are heavy. They're not going to have as tight of a turning radius, so they're a bit more cumbersome. Not really what they're designed to do, but it's a, it's a functionality that they can do. But it's those kinds of questions and answers that will help you kind of steer in the right direction because also if you're not going to use a belly mower, you may not want to invest well, it's going to cost more. A machine that has a mid-PTO, there's more mechanical components that are involved. And so that's just going to drive up the cost of the product. Sometimes you wind up with one that has that capability anyways. If you want to run a front mount snowblower, you need that mid-PTO on there too. So that could be another reason to have the mid-PTO model. But all these kinds of things to be aware of. And if you've never bought a tractor before, it's a horrible thing to find that out when you want to go buy the attachment and find out it doesn't work for it. And then, so for me, not knowing his location or what he's got going on, it just seemed like maybe he's going to have some sort of driveway work to do. And that could be putting in a driveway, that could be grading out a driveway, that could be maintaining it in the winter to keep it clear. And so, you know, not knowing where his location was at, he mentioned now he's going to be somewhere further south where snow is probably not a big concern, but he is going to be installing a driveway. And uh, having to maintain it afterwards. And so I think the land plane is just the, the hands down best tool for all that kind of work. I just had 220 yards of gravel put down on the next section of drive that I'm expanding. And we did have it tailgated in. The only tool that I used to spread that out was a land plane. And we're gonna double that because we're gonna be doubling the thickness of it. And then we're gonna be expanding it all around here and I'm going to continue to use the land plane. So you can use that to spread material, then you can use it to level it out and maintain it in the future as well. A cheap, versatile, effective tool that's really hard to beat. And so, you know, with all that information, there's not a specific tractor that I, that I would recommend to this guy, but I do think when we talked about, and I've done some polls on value brand versus premium band, brands that are out there and it kind of seems like with his budget, the premium brands, you know, so to speak, are out the window. He needs to look at something a bit more budget friendly and that could be the Coyote, that could be a um, Mahindra, could be an LS, could be the Summit. Um, you need to get something with a lot of bang for the buck without the premium price tag on there that gives you more room okay, more financial room to get those attachments and try to meet your budget. Um, I, I don't care what tractor you get, I really don't. It does not matter to me at all. I just, you wanna buy something that has a good dealership. I think that's a huge critical component. A lot of folks are doing what this guy's doing. A retired school teacher wants to move out and learn something new and you know, and is inspired by all the videos that are out there and, and just wants a new challenge in life, but that doesn't mean he knows how to to fix this tractor, right? So you need to have that that support there um, in case things do go wrong. And I can tell you, I, I have a lot of equipment and brand new equipment and things go wrong on a constant basis. So for me, I have too much to try to maintain myself. I need to rely on those dealers. Did a poll a long time ago though, where a lot of folks like to do their own wrenching, their own maintenance, all that kind of stuff. So more power to you as well as far as that goes. That's a personal decision on what you're willing to do. So he's looking again for somewhere around 10 acres, you know, some pasture land, some other whatever land it is, but about 10 acres. So not a huge chunk of land. And I do think realistically a 25 horsepower, you know, maybe something like the Summit, um, a step up from the subcompact. You know, if you, you could do a subcompact, a 1025R for example, would definitely get the job done. But if he wants to go a little bit bigger, get something like the Summit or comparable from uh, Coyote or, or Mahindra, you know, you can look at the John Deere 3032E, but I, I think, or the 3025E or the 3032E, I think your price point is gonna be really pushing it with uh, one of those brands there though, the, the Kubota or the John Deere. So find one of those, those value brands that I like to think of value as, um, you know, more bang for the buck, you know, and you're not just paying more for a name brand. That's going to likely be where you wind up. I don't think you need a 50 horse. I don't think you need a 40 horse. I don't think you need a 38 horse. If you want to get it, great. If you find extra money in your budget or you want to bump it up, just remember that tractor budget bumps up to a bigger size. Most likely your attachment budget bumps up as well. So Mr. Customer, there you have it. There's your answer. Hopefully this helps other folks that are watching. If you have input, for him or other folks that are in a similar situation or how you navigated making your own tractor decision and if it was the right one or not or what you wish you would have done differently then leave a comment down below and let them know and while we don't sell tractors we certainly do sell tractor attachments and we'd love to earn your business we ship all over the country every day of the week check us out at goodworkstractors.com if you enjoyed today's video we have all sorts of other videos out there over 700 other videos doing videos like this telling you about tractor attachments showing you tractor projects 
things to do, things not to do, safety videos as well. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.